we bring you yet another episode of Dil Se. We bring these episodes to you to have conversations on issues that matter with people that matter. And this time we have a unique conversation, a conversation that is with three retired judges of the Supreme Court. And as you know, uh, there's a lot of, um, you know, there are a lot of issues that are impacting the lives of our people. Um, the institution of the judiciary is the only hope for democracy. How well has that institution done over the years? What is the state of that institution are issues that we will be discussing. When judges are sitting in court and part of the judiciary, they're not allowed to go to the public. When they're out of court and they're retired, they say, why didn't you say it when you were a judge? Now, if when they were a judge, they couldn't say anything because they were part of the system. They can only say it as citizens of the country when they are retired as judges. So we have three distinguished judges who have made a mark in the Supreme Court of India. Justice Ananga Patnaik from Orissa, Justice Madan Gopur and Justice Deepak Gupta. I want to start with a question, not really with a question, but uh, with a thought. What is the Supreme Court of India? There are 34 judges. Chief Justice in 33. How can that ever be the Supreme Court of India? Because judges function in benches. So you don't have one Supreme Court of India. Oh, yes. Several Supreme Courts of India. See, in the US, they have a Supreme Court of nine judges. And all the nine judges sit together and decide. When they hear a matter, they after the hearing, they just sit together and decide whose view is what. And uh, what they do, they break up into the views, you know, say five judges are against an issue, four judges are in favor, they break up into groups and one of them writes a judgment for the five judges or the four judges, taking the views of all. This is, I think, the Supreme Court, because Supreme Court of India must have one view. It cannot have, you know, differing views in different benches. Sometimes I have noticed that uh, it all depends what uh, views the judges have from a particular bench, particularly presiding judge. And uh, ultimately, it evens out in the sense that somebody comes and differs from it. Right. Another view, then the whole thing is referred to. The issue is referred to. So a there, is no there is no there contiguity. There is no continuity. So if there is no continuity, then the Supreme Court is not really the Supreme Court. There are several Supreme Courts giving different judgments. I mean, in this conversation, we don't ask questions. Anybody can can say what they like. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> you know, my view is that uh, it's not as if we have 34 uh, Supreme Courts. You have 34 judges, and uh, when you get a case. Uh, you know, when you're dealing with cases, by and large, the judges are in agreement with each other. There may be some uh, instances where, you know, one judge differs from the other, which one can it's expect, fine. you know, I mean, there, there's nothing wrong with that. And uh, then if that happens, then it goes to, you know, a larger bench. Say if there are two judges sitting and they disagree, it goes to a bench of three judges. And those three judges speak for the court. Now, if you remember, you know, there was a time uh, when um, uh, Mrs. Indira Gandhi's election was set aside. Justice Krishnayer was the single judge, the That's vacation correct. judge. Yes. He spoke for the court. Right. That time also there were, I don't know, maybe 11 judges or 14 right, judges, right, I don't right. remember. But he spoke for the court as a single judge. Okay. So, yeah, you will have disagreements. I mean, uh, they, they, I, I, I don't see any difficulty in that. But that cannot be interpreted to mean that there are, uh, you know, the court is a polyvocal court, so to speak, or that there are 34 different. But the problem, uh, uh, Justice Lokur, is the following, that you have some judges who have a particular way of looking at laws, yeah. another set of judges who have an entirely different way of looking at laws. Yeah. And there must be some element of uniformity. Either the court should sit together and say, look, this should be the court's view. Yes. So, after discussion and then implement it. Otherwise, what happens is the high courts 
when they are looking at these matters, they don't know which judgment to follow. Yeah. And it's not just a problem with one judgment. There are several. No. On a Monday or on a Friday, yeah. there are actually 17 Supreme Courts. Yes. I differ with uh, Brother Lokur on this. Because, and it's like a luck of the draw. Yeah. Like, if, which bench you get. You know, yeah. we all know some judges are more liberal in granting bail, some are more tough. You see, even with honest opinions, yes. I'm not talking about, yes. Yes. it's just a difference of opinion. Correct. And when people have different opinions, they t and when you don't sit and bank, like they sit in most of the world, the Supreme Court sit yeah. and bank, we can't, I don't think we can afford to do that also. Yes, okay. I, the problem right. is we can't afford to, you can't have a Supreme Court sitting because then you never get over the cases. That's true. So you have to find a solution to that. Whether you have a court of appeal in between or something, that's something later. But right now, I would agree with you that there's not one court. It's, it doesn't speak as one voice. And that is also reflected in the last seven or maybe 10, 15 years when decisions are being overruled, some of them just in three months. Yes. A Supreme Court decision, a decision of the court of the highest court of the land, in my view, should not be disturbed for many, many years and that too only for very uh, compelling reasons. So let me tell you a problem that we face as lawyers. Nowadays when clients come to us, the first question they ask is which judges is listed before? What does that tell you? Yeah, because you know, every judge has his own pre uh, predilections. This, this is the problem. This is the problem. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I mean, I, what uh, Justice Deepak Gupta says is correct. Mm. That <clears throat> everybody has their own view. Mm. And the, when, when a client comes to you, he wants to know or she wants to know that, listen, who is the judge? Exactly. Because what is the view? Yeah. Right? So how, how do you get over that? But the, you, know? you get over it yeah. by, first of all, this Supreme Court of India, look at the kind of jurisdictions it has. It has original jurisdiction. Yes. It has jurisdiction of first appeals, then it is a 136 jurisdiction, right? Then it has all kinds of other jurisdictions. A advisory jurisdiction. Advisory jurisdiction. Now, question is, does, should the Supreme Court of a country have these multifarious jurisdictions? Mr. Sibyl, there is one way, yeah. which I used to do as Chief Justice of Madhya Pradesh. Yeah. I found out who are the judges very good in the criminal jurisdiction. Who are the judges who are very good in the civil jurisdiction? Who are the judges who are very good in tax matters? Who are the judges who are very good in constitutional matters? And accordingly formed the benches and ensured that the matters went to those courts. Because one, ultimately Supreme Court is under Article 141 lays down the law. The law should be correctly right. That's right. And if you, in Supreme Court, every judge is assigned to criminal cases. Whether he knows criminal law or not. Well, you can't possibly say that no judge knows criminal law. But I, 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 I remember, I remember once I went to a lecture of uh, Mr. Jaitpanani. That was take, taking place in the MIT Law School in Noida. And he told me, Justice Patnaik, why don't you tell your Chief Justice to ensure that criminal matters are listed only before judges who know criminal law. And that's very correct. And I have seen, when I have sat with a judge who is not well off in uh, what you call criminal matters, he will hear, he will hear ultimately pass on the matter to me. I know his problem. I have known of judges who no, don't know very well the constitution matters. He'll hear and hear and hear, pass on to me. But other matters, they are very good. So, this is a problem. Some judges are very well off in constitutional matters. Some judges are very, don't know much about the matter. But that this should but All of you have been chief justices of high courts, right? All of you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you must be organizing the courts in the same fashion. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you see, the problem, uh, I think, in the Supreme Court is this. You have some judges, particularly in bail matters, yes. for example. Yes. Right? You have some judges who are very reluctant to grant bail. Yes. There are some judges who are, you know, somewhat more liberal, so to speak. Right. 
Now, that's why the question is asked by your client who's yes. asking for bail. That's right. Before whom is that's it? why there should be a uniform system view of the Supreme uh, Court. Right, right, correct, right. correct. But there is a uniform view of the Supreme Court. Which is not being followed. Which is not being followed. So the problem <laughs> is, you know, not following your own judgments. That's right. I right? agree with you. That, that, I think, is a bigger problem. Yeah. When I the agree. Supreme Court says that, listen, under these circumstances, you must grant bail. And some judge says, no, I'm not But you know, it, this applies to even interpretation of statutes. Why just talk about bail? Yeah. You know, one judge interprets that very statute in a different way, just, you know, just two months earlier. And then two months later, another judge says, no, I don't agree with this. Now, you see, this brings about a lot of confusion. Problem. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, it does. In it the does. uniformity it of does. the law. Yeah. See, Mr. Sibal, something has to be done about yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, when I was in Madhya Pradesh, I faced a unique problem. There are three different benches. Jabalpur principal seat, Indoor bench and Gwalior bench. And the local statutes are the same for all. But Indoor bench will take one view. Yeah. Gwalior bench will take another view. So this is like Indoor and Gwalior uh, in the Supreme Court. Uh, uh. So <laughs> what I used to do, I used to constitute a bigger bench, uh. right, and ensure that may, sometimes it has been five judges bench, uh, sometimes in three judges bench, and all this difference are turned down and said that view taken by the Gwalior bench is not correct. That view taken by the Indoor bench is not correct. So one way is that you have to be in the Chief Justice Court has to be, our Chief Justice's uh, office must be scrutinizing all the time. Which judgments but are sir, different? High Court is fine, but this cannot happen in Supreme Court. No, I don't see any reason why it can't. You know, we've all been judges in the uh, Chief Justice of High Court. And High Court, some of the High Courts have a much larger strength than the Supreme Court. Yeah. And the Chief Justice do manage the roster. Mm. And uh, especially now with the computerization and taking aid of computers. You see, my view has always been that this, the, super, uh, uh, the chief justice is the master of the roster. Somebody has to be given, somebody has to be trusted. Uh, we are going to come to that question shortly. No, we will discuss <laughs> that. Issue. But somebody has to be trusted. Somebody will. But my feeling is that once the roster is framed, and I would agree with Justice Patnaik that the roster should be framed, keeping in view the interest and the acumen of the judges in the respective fields. And you frame a roster, but then you stick by the roster. And the roster should play by itself. Sure. You know, sure. when it plays by itself, and there's no as little sure. human intervention. Sure. Sure. I have a serious issue on that. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a conversation yeah. on this. You see, master of the roster is fine, but ultimately that's an administrative order. Right? Administrative orders must have an element of transparency. Right? There is no element of transparency in the context of which matter goes to whom. There are rules of the Supreme Court that are not followed, right? No, but that's a serious issue in the Supreme Court. You know, the rules say that if a matter is before two judges and the bench breaks, it goes to the senior most judge. It doesn't happen in Supreme Court. The rule says that if a judge has issued notice on a matter, it must go back to that judge. It doesn't happen in Supreme Court, which means there is an enormous element of discretion. Now, the master of the Rossa has discretion, but the Supreme Court says discretion must be exercised in a reasonable manner consistent with the rules. Now, should this concept of master of the Rossa be above the law? Or it should can't. it be subject? It can't. It, it can't. can't be. But uh, Kabul, you've been practicing in the Supreme Court for a long time, yeah. right? I remember when I had started over there, there was no such rule like this, yes. like what, but the convention was there. Correct. You know, so if the convention was being followed, now that convention has been made into a rule. That's right. So follow it. Yeah. No, no, my view is very simple. Yeah. Yeah. That the master of the roster is the master. But once he frames the roster, then he becomes subservient to the roster. But sir, if you say, if you say then all he, criminal courts, sir, problem is, you say all courts will have criminal jurisdiction. No, that then is what's a, the roster? That, no, that is a bad framing of the roster. <laughs> See, the thing is, if you frame the roster properly, the, uh, Brother Patnaik must have done it and he must have done it in Hyderabad and Madhya Pradesh with a number of judges. We've done it, I've done it both in a very small high court and a larger high court like Chhattisgarh, where you have very human intervention is the minimum. I can tell you in Chhattisgarh, my registrar judicial told me that now for 15-20 days I don't have to come to you for 
getting orders on a particular case because the roster it, it says if it can't be listed before db1 it will go to db2 if it can't be go to db2 you see you, and it's not by name of judge it's by the division bench or single bench number we here uh, unfortunately uh, that has not been the practice i think yeah but uh, if i may just uh, you know add a problem in that supposing the criminal cases are being dealt with by a judge who is conservative does not want to grant bail and the master of the roster says all right you're going to deal with all criminal cases guys who are asking for bail have had it yeah <laughs> no that's why this i is say the problem. this is this the is problem. this is why i say ultimately it goes to one question as he has also said and i have said the benches who are well equipped in the particular matter criminal matter civil matter constitutional matter they will sit constantly and the chief justice should when a bail matter comes send it to the criminal bench and chief justice while deciding whom to grant bail or not has to decide who is balanced who is not conservative who is not who is yeah, balanced that, that's the problem that that the chief justice decide yeah, and right. give all i have when i was in madhya pradesh there was one judge i found no complaints against his bail matter bail orders very balanced very balanced i ensured and requested him you please sit in that bail, bail matters and he did very well and if other matter sit are so much of complaint somebody is very liberal and somebody is very conservative so you have to find select the right judge and put it there problem is far more serious i have been now practicing for 50 years now what has happened it's not i've not seen this before what is happening is now the process of appointment of judges is such and i'm sorry to say this that there is an element of a compromise right because government wants certain people and the judiciary wants certain people and you can't you can't proceed further unless both of them agree right so either you stall the whole employment process or you compromise now what happens is there are key chief justices who are placed in different high courts right depending on the nature of the compromise they become masters of the roster there they are the most sensitive cases are to be assigned by them to judges and i have seen in the last 10 12 years that that's very troublesome and so this this emanates from emanates from the process of appointment of judges right now how do we settle that system how do we make it more effective and more trans- ultimately the judiciary must be independent without an independent judiciary democracy will be you know in great danger and it is how do we do that and have why seen, are we not applying our mind to that estimate have you seen the changes that have taken place in the uk yes now they have changed the entire system of right. appointments they have appointed a judicial commission right yeah now the first motto they say lord chancellor has to ensure that any appointment any transfer takes place the primary thing is rule of law and independence of judiciary <clears throat> statutorily laid down and there is no constitution in um, no written constitution there in fact i have i'm writing that uh, books it's not come out so i have compared the uk institutions they have done a wonderful job somewhat at that kind but the problem is it has to be done at the legislature level parliament level who will do it parliament must get interested no no parliament is now saying that look you know we, we, there is no basic structures where is the question? yes ah, yes they were going the other way parliament does it yes ah, so ultimately so, how, so there is no therefore there is no hope that's what it comes to there is no hope unless you settle the system and set it right and parliament is not willing to do it courts are continuing in this fashion so where do we go from here you see it's like this <clears throat> Uh, first of all i must tell you that i am not in favor of the transfer policy all right you say that you are transferring judges in the you know, for the better administration of justice i don't know what that means as if uh, you know the administration of justice is suffering like justice murli dar yeah why was he transferred yeah. you know there are so many of them i mean akil qureshi akil qureshi there are many of them and that is one the second thing is you know the uh, 
appointment of a chief justice from outside the parent high court. Yes. Now, the reason why that happened <coughs> was historical. I mean, it has there's something that happened which led to this uh, decision being taken. But those circumstances don't exist today. Yes. They've not existed for the last 10 years or 15 years. Correct. So the policy of having an outside chief justice, I think, should be scrapped. That's the first thing. Why? Because like Justice Patnaik says, the chief justice, whoever he is from his own high court, he knows yes. all the judges. Yes, yes. So he knows who's good in constitutional law. He knows who's good in uh, criminal law, who's good in civil law. Don't have some, you know, somebody from outside come in who doesn't know anything about that high court. So I think the first thing that they should do is they should just scrap this idea of having an outside chief justice. Once that is taken care of, scrap the idea of having, you know, transfer, transferring judges from here to there. Why, why do you want to do it? I mean, if, if a guy is doing something wrong in his own high court, what is the guarantee that he will not do something do wrong in some thing, other yes. high court? I agree. I agree. Right? And if you have information that he's doing something wrong in this particular high court, take action. Yes. You know, we've had an instance where something wrong was being done by a judge of the Delhi high court. And uh, the, you know, chief justice told him that I think it's, it's, it's time you quit. And he yeah. did quit. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, I agree with Madan on, just Madan Lokur on that, that this transfer policy as well as the appointment of teachers from outside is no longer valid or good. For, it doesn't work in this country. It's, it's in fact being used to circumvent the independence of the judiciary. 100%. Yeah. So, I also find it another reason coming from a smaller high court like Himachal. That smaller high courts neither find representation in the Supreme Court, yeah. nor do they have a... There are many states in this country which do not have a Chief Justice represented anywhere. Yes. Otherwise, if they had their own court and their own Chief Justice, I think Justice Vazir was Chief Justice of JNK for about 17 years. Yes. But then uh, that is the way it is. It should yes, be. Yes, and most of all, I feel that when you feel that a chap is not working properly or he's dishonest or whatever, for whatever reason you trans want to transfer him from one, why should he be put into another court and normally you'll choose a small court like Sikkim or Himachal or somewhere yeah, yeah. as if those co those states don't matter. Exactly. I agree. And in fact, he may be number 10 or 20 in his own high court and in a smaller state he just becomes a part of the collegium or he's J1 or J2 exercising all those powers. I think it just backfires. It doesn't work at all. I have, uh, may I say, yeah. take two minutes? On this appointments, mm. I have uh, two, three issues. I mean, what Arun Jaitley used to say, one, the retirement age should be the same for judges of the High Court and the Supreme Court. Mm. This unholy hold which the judges of the Supreme Court, especially the judges of the Collegium, have on senior judges of various High Courts, and this pain in the neck, which many in judges, many of us get in the High Court, looking up at the Supreme Court, this way has to come to an end. That is one. So you make the age equal, and for three years you keep filling vacancy. Your vacancy position will also uh, improve hell of, uh, hell of a lot. It will really, uh, you know, you will fill up a lot of the vacancies. <coughs> and most of all, I think most importantly, there should be no post-retirement jobs for mm -hmm. judges. You give them good pensions, you good whatever, and we all join. When we join judgeship, we know this is what we are going to earn, and probably we all earned much more than what we thought when we joined. The salaries, the perks have increased quite a bit. It's not. That. But there are two elements in this transfer policy that I want to just seek your views on. What the transfer policy does is you pick up a junior judge in a court, make him chief justice, right, with the intent of having him come to Supreme Court earlier. Right? Now that's very dangerous. But that has been happening for a long time. I know that. I know that. But now what is happening is like the army, you decide who your chief justice is going to be 10 years ahead. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening in the judiciary. People who have worked with certain people, with certain judges in the high courts that they're in, they want to bring them to Supreme Court. And therefore, that's one, 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 one aspect. The second aspect, it is just destroyed the independence of the high courts. Because yeah. the collegium system makes the judge in the high court look up to judges of the Supreme Court, right? And then make sure that they please them in order to come to Supreme Court. And that sort of 
in fact impacts their independence while functioning as judges in the High Court. This is what I have felt. I may be dead wrong, but I wanted your views on it. Yeah, about the uh, you know observation that the judges of the High Court look up to the Supreme Court or look up to the Collegium in the Supreme Court. Right, right. Uh, yeah, that 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 is correct. I, I'm not I'm not uh, doubting that. But how do you stop it? You know, one way of stopping it is that the judges in the collegium, you know, I mean, every weekend everybody goes to some high court or the other. That's right. right. There was a time I remember when the judges used to go to the judicial academy, okay, because they would try and, you know, uh, meet the judges, discuss uh, issues with them in the judicial academy, not go to the high courts. But now, judges of the Supreme Court have virtually stopped going to the Judicial Academy. Once or twice, somebody goes, but they go to the High Courts. <coughs> and when they go to the High Courts, I mean, they're treated like, uh, you know, like demigods. kings, so demigods. to speak. Demigods. <laughs> yeah, like demigods. For, just for this reason. Yeah. So, I think there has to be, you know, when you talk about self-restraint, judicial restraint and this, that and the other, I think this is one of the areas that one has to look at, definitely. But it's a systemic problem. It's a root it's cause. It's a systemic problem, yeah. yes. Mr. Sibbal, root cause is that Collegium judgment. Once you concentrated powers you with the five judges of the Supreme Court, senior most judges of the Supreme Court, then every chief justice thinks that if I have to go to Supreme Court, I have to please them. Right. And shall I tell you truly what happens? Chief Justice has different programs on the Madhya Pradesh High Court or Chhattisgarh High Court or Guwahati High Court or say, wherever it is. Programs are organized and it comes to invitation, he ensures that a judge from the Corgium comes there. Yes, yes, yes. I've seen this from Guwahati days, 94 Guwahati days. So this is the problem with that Corgium judgment. Prior to that, I have known of Chief Justices, not bothered, who came from Supreme Court and not. They did their own job. One is uh, your uh, GP Singh, Justice GP Singh. Mm -hmm. The other I found many judges in the oh, my Chief Justice of Orissa, SK Ray. They were all very independent. The judges of the Supreme Court came to Bhubaneswar. They, they, they come to Kattaka North, they go to Puri, have a darshan, go back. They are not bothered. Right. This is what it is. So the root cause is that call them judgment. No, no, I agree. And one solution, as he rightly says, you make them equal. The problem is there's a Brahminical culture there also, I believe. I'm not in the court. I don't know about the judges there. But there's a Brahminical culture. Why? Because the judges of the High Court look only to those five. Yes, yes. Yeah. They don't look at the others. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Right? Yeah. And I think those five also believe because they know the future is there. Yes, yes. They yes. also know that and even the registry in that context is more concerned about the five than the rest. Yeah. I mean, you know. No, this is a hard fact. You say, Mr. Sebal. They knew that I would never reach the collegium, so this no, is no, different Mr. treatment Mr. meted this, out. See, this is not right. Yes, yes, you Mr. Know, Sibal. And the court has to correct that. Ah, yeah. yeah. Shall I tell you one thing? When I entered the collegium, I found more judges coming and meeting me. From the high courts. So why this happened? Tell me. No, no, we all know why it happened. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but let me go on to another issue, I think, which also relates to the master of the roster, if I may go yes. back to it. Now, why is it that matters of great importance take five years to be heard? What's the relevance of hearing a matter after five years? Mm. There's no point. You're right, 100% yeah, right. right. So why, when we talk about that Bakil Tariq pe Tariq lete hain, to Tariq pe Tariq to judge bhi lete hain. Yeah. This is Tariq pe Tariq. No, when there were no issues way. like the Kashmir case, yeah. when habeas corpus petitions are not taken up for years on exactly. end. See, I've written, I've written about this somewhere else also. When Mr. Kuldeep Nayar was arrested and the bench of yes. Justice Rangarajan and Justice R. N. Karwal heard in the Delhi High Court. Yes. And uh, when the government saw the way the wind was blowing in the court, they withdrew the order of detention. That's right. And moved an application that now you dispose it of as infractors. The court said no. He has a right to know why he was even detained for one minute. Right. Right. 
and nowadays hundreds of that habeas corpus. Culture. Culture. When we, when when I filed these petitions in the Supreme Court, all of this went to a particular judge. Adjournment after adjournment after adjournment. What's the point of having a habeas corpus petition? Oh. What's the point of not hearing the uh, 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 the demonetization issue? Electoral bonds. Electoral bonds issue. Yes, Kashmir yes, issue. you're right. Habeas, habeas corpus petition, matters of personal liberty, right. They must have priority. But the culture of liberty doesn't exist, unfortunately. I'm sorry to say. Where yeah. is that culture of liberty? I have great to see. We are all part of that institution. We love it. And our passion yeah. is to make sure that it's independent. Why yeah. are we having this conversation? Because we are worried. And that culture of liberty is, is, has diminished to such an extent that does this feel, I mean, clients feel kya fayda hai jane ka? Is it better to, it is better maybe trial court mein shayad mein jaya. Yes, yes. This is the, this is the, this is the view, unfortunately. So, you, and there the master roster is in complete control as you mentioned. Yeah. Right, so why, why are these cases, uh, cases listed after five years? Mm -hmm. No explanation. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's a very serious problem. It's a serious problem. So you've had uh, demonetization, you've had Kashmir. You are now going through this uh, electoral bonds, bonds, you know. Yeah, why, why did it take so no, long? Chief Justice, so, as the master of law, must ensure that these important constitutional issues and matters of personal liberty must give it, must give it priority. There is no doubt about it. That's right. I don't know why the Chief Justice doesn't do it. See, oh. the Indian Supreme Court is not only an adjudicator of disputes. Mm -hmm. But it is also the protector of the civil rights. So yes. this is, we are the probably yeah. the only country in the world which has a, something like Article 32. Uh, yes, Absolutely. Article 32. It is the most powerful court mm -hmm. in the yeah, world, yeah. Mm -hmm. but it is showing itself to be powerless. Mm -hmm. That's the tragedy so, of the Supreme Court. So the protection of human rights is uh, very, very essential. And that, I feel, there has been something more could have definitely happened in the last year. I would, I mean, I can say this because of my own experience. When a matter of great public importance or public interest used to happen, Justice Bhagwati used to sue a motor take action. He didn't wait for a petition. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's a matter of great public importance. There are so many things happening in this country. Yes, Somebody uh, is, 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 is slapped <coughs> in a yeah. classroom. Yes, yes, correct. Right? You know, somebody is made to say a certain thing and somebody makes a hate speech. We, we go to court, we file petition after petition, nothing is done. Mm. Why should I have to file a petition? The Supreme Court should sue a motor take notice. You are right, yeah. you are right, 100% right. Because right. I remember, I, I read morning newspaper every day. Uh, one morning I read, one girl has been gang raped. Yeah. Dalit girl, yeah. in some place in Madhya Pradesh. So I took that piece from the newspaper, Intent, a so much to public interest. Yeah, and the moment it happened, mm. the police people came and arrested her. Arrested all four of them. Four of them had gang raped. That's a great message. Right. Somebody had written from the prison in a postcard that our diet is like this, very bad diet. I intend that PL directed all the district judges to inspect the jail and report on the diet and it was found that it was correct. Had to be rectified. So, so why doesn't the Supreme Court use its so motor power? Yes, 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 correct. You see, I, so I would uh, just like to add <coughs> or continue what he is saying. You know, one is the Supreme Court not exercising so motor power. Right. It should. High Court also. What about the High Court? Yes, yes. High Court, I agree. Sir. You know, I agree. I mean, everything is not of national importance, yeah, yeah, but yeah, it yeah. is of the state. Bulldozing houses. Yeah, Europe. correct. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Why? Why does somebody have to go to the court? Yeah, exactly. You know, the high court should say that, listen, what's going on? You better tell us, yeah. you know, but the high courts are not doing it. Yes. One of the reasons could be that they're looking up to the Supreme and Court. And the Supreme Court is not doing yeah. it. See, yes, yes. There. We had uh, Justice P.D. Desai as our Chief Justice for five years. Yeah. Yeah, Probably one of the most Finals. wonderful judges Absolutely. this country yes, has yes, known. Yes, yes, yes. And in those five years, the number of uh, public interest litigations he entertained, Suomoto, it transformed Himachal Pradesh right. yes. in many ways. And everything was done for the public good. Yeah, yeah. It was never done for uh, any political reasons or anything. Nowadays, uh, Mr. Simple, the problem is, 
even i person like me who's more like you know favor in favor of pl becomes very very hesitant to it because large number of the pls are motivated yes. either for business reasons yes. or for political reasons Absolutely. and you get very you know you're a little wary and chary of whether to entertain such a petition or not that's also that's the counter though i still feel judges especially when mm-hmm. nobody's come to court it's better for the court itself because that's then no allegation can be raised that it's for a reason that's, yeah, correct. that's correct. correct and 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 courts are witnessing this these incidents day in and day out yeah yeah and they are waiting for somebody to file a petition why hmm. see in a country like it's india where more not this is court you just can take some more yes and that is the judgment of supreme court also right, right. Yeah. but only chief justice yeah. nobody else but other judges yeah, can, can bring it to the judge yeah, yeah, you can tell but the chief justice but even no. that is not done uh, even that is not done and the other thing that i am seeing in court again is that nowadays brothers judges don't speak who are sitting purely judges don't speak yeah, why really? in, in in the court yes yeah. why they don't differ why and i've seen them wanting to differ and the senior judge sort of says does something like this that's it no, that's not right that, that's, that's not absolutely right. wrong yeah. <laughs> no. we we shared the bench for 17 months yes. yeah yeah oh, a little longer i think maybe yeah uh, from february 17 till uh, he retired in december yeah 19 18 18 so we shared the bench for almost 2 years yes i know that i was preparing but, but then we deferred yeah. i did defer with him yes, yes, yes. no no I, what is happening now you can see it on the screen so when the gesture is made <laughs> it's, it's it's those uh, you know people in the court who are telling me why 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 did this happen did you see what happened that's very that's most unfortunate but uh, on a lighter side i can say that once I wanted to differ, but when the chief just said issued notice, yeah, then of course, then you. That's the other thing. Huh? Now, if the other judge wants, the norm was, the yeah. practice was, yeah. one judge wants to issue notice, mm. issue. but the senior judge agrees. Yeah. yeah, but that's no. also not. No, being here I didn't want a notice to be issued, but when the uh, yeah, senior right. judge, then yeah, you don't. Then yeah, you don't. Yeah, that's just, yeah. So that kind of camaraderie also. Hmm. That I don't know. I hope I. I because you must. We don't have the benefit of. you know watching like you know one thing <laughs> one thing may be happening most of the judges who are coming from the high court they are not aware of all those earlier yeah. you know approaches of the supreme court yeah. that is differing you know that let me tell you uh, let me share with you an order that i read when justice beg was the chief justice somebody published in the newspapers this is during emergency Ooh. that uh, registrar of the supreme court of india has led it to different high courts saying oh yeah high courts are not functioning this way that way that no that and he said that during emergency high courts have been functioning much better than the supreme court right <laughs> is doing much better than the supreme court now Oh, Justice Beg issued a notice of contempt. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, Justice Krishnayar was sitting there with him, and he said, "Where is the contempt? Yeah. Where is the yeah. contempt?" Mm-hmm. Oh, then he wrote it and said, "There is no contempt." He dropped it. So you see this: how a puny judge also differs from the Chief Justice. Absolutely, absolutely. Huh? And these things, these uh, are good messages that goes to the High Court also. Right. Once we look up to some court, when I become a judge. We, I found Bankar Chilia, just as Bankar Chilia was there, just as V. S. S. Manu was there. Many good judgments coming, and we used to get inspired by those judgments. Just as Savant was there, yes, yes, mm. yes, very good judges, and we used to get absolutely inspired by them, and we developed our judi- ourselves uh, in that mold, and we come to some good perform that way. But today's judges, if they send this kind of message, the so Supreme Court gets the message. these judges that will come they will different they will develop in a different mold they are they're also human beings yeah, you're right you're right they're That's not saints right so, so actually what we have now done today is just started a conversation a conversation that impacts uh, institutions impact the lives of millions of this country and the only institution that can actually protect those people is the judiciary and therefore we are having the first of these conversations we will request you sir to come again Sure. Well, there are so many issues to be discussed. Sure, sure. And, let uh, let me respond yeah. to you yeah. by saying this: 
once we are retired nobody is bothered about us right <laughs> they, they only Sir, but you are bothered about the institution no, we are bothered yeah. but the first person who has called us dear for a discussion is you yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I, i must thank you for that no, thank you for coming <laughs> yeah, thank and, you. and yeah, we will yeah. continue with this conversation yeah, definitely uh, hopefully once yeah. a month or twice uh, once in two months thank you very much thank you okay.